Hi there, good afternoon everybody. Uh, I'm Steve Peterson here in lovely, beautiful, sunny Balamina. Uh, it's always good to be home, but I'm here at Sirius Fishing uh, and I'm very excited to show you some of my favorite fly rods that I brought with me uh, from the Scott Fly Rod Company. Uh, we're gonna take a, a look at the Scott Centric range in particular here for the next sort of 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, and I've brought three rods from the range. I've got a nine foot for a five, I've got a nine foot six for a six and I've got the 10 foot for a six. So these are my chosen rods for most of my still water fishing. Uh, and this range, well, it'll do a bit of everything for you. They're, they're Scott's, very much Scott's high end performance rod range. Um, and serious fishing here is a great place because you can come, we've got this area of grass here at the back of the shop where you can come and test cast them, give them a little test, test various lines on them and cast the rods, make sure they're the right ones for you. So first of all, the first one I've got here uh, is the nine foot for a five. Um, lovely rod, you'll see the, the, the cosmetics of the Scott rod in general. We've got a lovely, really dark gray, black blank. Scott in general, the cosmetics are very, very understated. They're not a rod that blings like that. No, no fancy sort of weird markings. They're nice and understated cosmetics. You'll see here, all handwritten. These rods are made from start to finish at the Scott Fly Rod Company in Colorado in the USA. Beautifully handwritten here what the rod is, nine foot for a five. We've got nice little touches of sort of 12 inch, 20 inch. If you do catch a big one, you can measure your fish quickly before you release it. Um, as you would expect, this is a top end rod. It's got the very best componentry on the rod. Top end rings, you've got snake rings going up through the rod and coming down into a nice lined stripping ring. The rod is of course a four piece. Uh, moving down through the handle, we've got this lovely little full wells handle, just shaped to fit the hand perfectly there. It just really is lovely to grip, super quality cork and a beautifully machined reel seat also here on the rod. Uh, incidentally on that's worth mentioning sort of reels and lines, uh, in general the line I would recommend for, for all round use for any of these Scott centrics would be the Mastery uh, MPX or the Amplitude MPX from Scientific Anglers. The MPX taper, I'll probably talk about it when I'm casting the rod, but it just loads the rods really well, gives you a nice, good, easy cast. Makes it easy, in other words. Uh, and I've teamed this up with a nice uh, Waterworks Lamson Speedster S reel in the midnight colour. I think that looks really good on there. But that's probably enough about the cosmetics and the look of the rod. What we really want to know is, is the performance of, of the rod. And these are very much performance rods. And I've got three to cast. And I'm just going to chat about how they feel and perhaps the, the circumstances where I would use each one. Um, this is starting with the nine foot number five. This is a great little all rounder. You could catch a bass or a, a pollock in the sea with this. You could fish on a river with a little dry flyer. You can take it to a still water. If there was one rod that did everything, it would probably be a nine foot for a five, certainly in my opinion anyway. Um, so on to the casting. Now again, this is a, an amplitude, scientific anglers amplitude MPX fly line on here. So one of the things about the Centrix is that they are a fast action rod. There's no getting away from it. It's a performance rod. However, Scott very much make fishing rods. And what I mean by that, the rod is not too stiff or too fast. There is a nice amount of feel and bend in the tip. They're a pleasure to cast. So I've just got my sort of roughly about my 10 yards of fly line out there, just enough to load it. And it just loads it, you know, short range, nice and easy, easy to cast, nice and simple. It loads it really, really nicely. It's a very, very accurate rod. Uh, for accuracy with this, if you've got rising fish in front of you and you want to be nice and accurate, I like to get my thumb on top of the cork here, point my foot at the target and everything's straight up and down. A little bit like a darts player, everything's in a nice straight line and it's amazing just how accurate you can actually be there. I'm aiming for a daisy, it's 33 feet away and I'm, I'm not hitting it but I'm getting close, you know. Close enough that if it was a trout, it would see my fly and that's all you want. But nice and very, very accurate uh, rod and nice and easy to cast. Something that's often forgotten about when we, we look at, especially performance rod these days, how does it roll cast? Very important cast. I use the actual roll cast a lot myself. Basic roll cast. They're always a little bit harder on grass because you don't have the water surface gripping hold of your line and your leader to help load the rod, but it's a great roll casting tool as well. 
this will roll cast they'll do a little a little jump roll jump rolls nice and simple and easy that tip just to illustrate how well the rod tip is working it's doing all the work for me there nice little roll cast and we can of course develop these into our spay casts single spays like so we can do a double spay this little nine foot for a five will do just about anything for us we can snake roll with it that's a great fun cast that one wonderful cast to change direction with if you want a big direction change but it's a lovely light accurate rod feels great in the hand and the mpx taper is really lovely on there extending the line a little bit let's pull a little bit of line off let's let's load the rod a little bit more let's see how it performs for us go for a little bit of a medium range cast and shoot some line you know nice and slow and smooth let the rod do the work there we go whoosh you know we got about 20 yards there so a nice fishing cast um, and the rods doing the work for us really I'm not having to do very much you get the timing right you've got a weight forward line you get the head in the air you load the rod let it go really nice smooth nice and easy and a nine foot for a five can be a good distance tool as well if you want it to be we'll pull a little bit more line off I'm going to bring my left hand into play and do a little bit of hauling with it and I don't know if the camera will pick up uh, the loops of line in the air but what I'm really looking for is a nice tight loop going back and a nice tight loop going forward that's just going to cut through the air nicely nice and tight smooth and slow there there I'm going to let it go this time so now we're getting to well not a lot of fly line left there we're around about it's a 35 yard long long line i would say that was about a 30 yard cast so a, a decent distance cast but with very little effort from me from me you'll see my hauling hands doing a lot of work it's a bit of a windy day the wind's bouncing around but it's a nice smooth easy rod if you want to get the distance one false cast boom out it goes um so that's the nine foot for a five that's my little go-to rod for almost anything but a lot of the waters I fish particularly still waters I like to use a long leader team of buzzers teams of dries whatever I'm doing and the nine foot rod just sometimes isn't quite long enough to control those long leaders uh, and for maybe some more distance off the bank so I'm gonna move things up now and pick up my nine foot six for six which I have here if I can untangle everything here we go so nine foot six for a six obviously the centric exactly the same cosmetics as you, as you can imagine but nine foot six for a six a little bit more powerful we've got that extra six inches that will help us with our longer leaders and again I've teamed this up with this at this time is the mastery MPX and we've got the lovely little guru reel from waterworks Lamson uh on there in the olive color i think that looks amazing that's a nice looking reel um so let's do a little bit of casting with this now we've stepped up it's it's a more powerful rod a wonderful distance rod uh this would be my go-to for the reservoir bank still water fine from the boat as well but off the bank this is the one i i i go for uh it's a it's it's a nice rod for close in work mid-range or for extreme distance it works really well uh, and I will use on this nine foot six for a six from dries with floating lines right down to big lures fry feeding time with with, with fast sinking lines it will cope with just about anything um, casting wise lovely light in the hand nice balance again it's it's just smooth it just feels nice you know when you get a nice rod and line combination uh, and the line is helping a lot here as well but you get the right combination and it just it just feels right and it's easy and it is a real pleasure to cast so here's my loading point you'll see there's my the head of the lines out there and i'm just well let's get a little bit more off and just just shoot one cast get it to load boom you know it's probably about 18 15 18 yards out there it's a good fishing distance but it's i've just got it in one cast thumb on top of the cork handle I'm just getting hopefully getting a bit of height into my back cast there tapping it forward 
smooth, nice and easy, and I'm fishing straight away one false cast. Um, I think a lot of the problem people do maybe too many false casts, where the line is going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, you know. I used to work on a trout fishery and 22 times was the, amount of, the, the most I ever counted of an angler casting backwards and forwards before he let it go. And when your fly's in the air, you're not going to catch any fish, you know. So I think it's a good idea. Keep, I don't say don't do any false casting, but keep it down to a minimum. Because what you often find is the second or third false cast, it's actually going really quite well. That's the time to let go when your rod's loaded. Don't do another three, four, five or six trying to get that extra extra few few feet because it tends to go the other way. But get it loaded. So most lines these days are sort of colour coded for us. The head or the casting weight of the line. Get that outside of the rod tip. Get your rod loaded. We'll do one more to speed it up. Shoot. That's a real nice fishing distance there. Um, nice, simple and easy. So again, this is very much my reservoir bank still water bank stroke boat rod um, but mostly this would be the one i'd pick up from the bank all the time so we'll put a little bit more line off now we'll go put a, put a double haul in here go for a little bit of distance um, nice and simple get that loaded i don't know if you can pick up those loops back loop there is lovely and tight got quite a lot of line in the air but the rod's handling it no problem at all we'll just go for a shoot there Nice and easy, not too much effort. Again, there's 30 yards out there. Nice and simple. We'll do that again. It's also a great rod for going into the wind. You get a bit of a breeze. Cuts in through the wind really, really well. And it will also, for this type of rod, quite often if I'm fishing a dry fly, there's target fish rising. I need to be able to pick up a nice long line. This will pick up a really nice long line. If I bring my left hand in and put a hole in there, no problem. That's the whole head of the line just picked up nice and easy. Let it go, nice and simple. Going into the wind, as I mentioned, we've got a bit of a swirly wind here, so it's not coming from one direction in particular, but a real good tip is think of it, if you're casting into the wind, it's often the best place to fish, because it's often where the fish are, because any food stuff on the lake or the, or the reservoir is going to get blown in towards that bank, so you need to be casting into the wind a lot of the time. You're more likely to encounter feeding fish casting into the wind. And I always liken it, it's like kicking a football or a rugby ball into the wind. If you kick it high, the wind's going to get hold of it and bring it right back at you. If you can get it low, it might just get somewhere. This I say that the wind has dropped a little bit, but I'll go this way. I'll try and show you what I mean. If I throw it high up, you know, the wind's blowing that back, bouncing it back to me. If I get it low, keep the power on, it hopefully will just get somewhere. It's not always easy going into the wind, but this rod has got all the power to pump that in there when you need it. Very powerful in the butt, but again, the tip is bending nicely and it's a pleasure to cast it's not too stiff at all yeah nice and smooth oh it's, i don't i just don't want to put it down you know it's just lovely to cast it's that sort of rod you know there we go so that is the nine foot six for a six the final rod i've got here is yeah it's the real weapon of 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 the range it's the 10 foot for a six now my sort of normal years ago not that long ago normal sort of go-to reservoir loch outfit would have been 10 foot for a seven but i'm a firm believer now that the six is the new seven the rods are more powerful the lines are more efficient so the six weight now will do everything old seven and eights would have would do in my opinion so this is a 10 foot for a six and this would be my weapon of choice and again it's for the reservoir boat or from the bank. Uh, again, all the, the, the understated cosmetics exactly the same as you can imagine. Teamed this up, we've got a nice little Lamson Remix reel on here and I've got, interestingly, a different line. This is a really interesting line. It's a, a really good, fun line to cast. It's the Scientific Anglers Volantis. Um, now, what is, what is the Volantis? I mean, this is an interesting line. This is a, an integrated shooting head. So it's a shooting head but the running line is nice and smoothly joined to the head itself. So you don't get any rattling through the rod rings. It's nice and smooth. We have this lovely orange colored sort of tracer section at the back of the head of the line. And this is actually an intermediate, although not really that relevant because we're on grass. It's not going to sink. 
But what I love about this line, a lot of the reservoirs I fish, my local club water at home in Cheshire, um, there's walls and trees and there's always something behind you. So when I cast, I do like to cast a long way uh, on, on, from, from the bank or often from the boat. But to cast a long way, you often need a lot of room behind. You need to lay that line back. Where this Volantis comes in, it loads the rod very quickly. It loads the rod at short, short range. So all you've got to do is just get the head to come behind you and launch it forward. Whoosh! You get an amazing shoot um, of line so quickly and easily, but without the need for a, a, a long back cast. Um, I, I've really got to love this line recently. Like I say, quite a few of the waters I fish uh, back home this line works really well and if you want a bit of distance with minimal effort uh, this is a great option to, to, to try so I'll just bring it back so the the orange the tracer is at in in the rod tip and just to show you yeah you can just see that there so the head of the line I know this is going to load this rod really well so in a big wind I'm just going to get the back cast there load it shoot it whoosh and you're fishing so quickly and easily I and mean, when you think you don't catch fish when your flies are in the air but over a day's fishing you're out there you've got a real good fishing distance nice and easy when other people are struggling with their flies stuck in the trees a really great line uh, to fish with now this is a 10 foot 10 foot for a six but it still it doesn't feel heavy it feels lovely to cast it's still nice and smooth with this, with this Volantis line, we'll open it up a little bit. We'll go for a bit more distance. We'll go and see if we can get a nice big shoot now. Get the whole head. I mean, you get phenomenal tight loops. I don't know if you can pick that up, but that, that loop there is so incredibly tight. I'll just wind this up. You'll see there, that's a, that's a long line, a little, very big shoot. That shot, you know, 30, 30 yards there, I would say, something about that. And again, not too much effort. It's loading the rod. The rod itself is smooth, the tip is bending nicely, it's doing a lot of the work for me. Once I get that line in the air and it loads, it's just flying out there. It's a real pleasure, just a pleasure to cast with. There's one, one back cast and it's, and it's gone out there nicely. So minimum effort, lovely outfit. And again, it just feels right. Um, so yeah, you know, the Scott rods, you get very much, just to sum up really, you get that hand-built feel with, with, with these rods. They're, they're not mass-produced. Uh, every rod is, a, is, is an individual. Um, they're beautifully made, handcrafted. Um, and if you want something just that little bit special uh, with top performance, the Scott really is a great rod to, to, to look at. And obviously there's lots of great fishing rods out there, great fly rods out there. And the great thing here at Serious Fishing, you can come and try them and make sure you get the right rod for you uh, and the right fly line for you as well. That's also very important. Um, so that's about it from me, really. I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, I hope you enjoy your fishing. That's the main thing this year. Hopefully this weather will improve and we can get out there and enjoy some fishing. And I hope you all have a great season. And thanks for watching.